Hi, this is Dr. Molly Gebrian, and you are watching the fourth and final part in this series of videos on memorization and preparing for memorized performance. So if you missed the first three parts, they're linked to below. Please go watch them. Um, so the first part was about um, different types of memory we use when we perform. It also talked about the first step in the memorization process, which is called encoding. The second video talked about consolidation, the second step, and the third video talked about um, retrieval, which is the third step, third step in the memorization process. Um, so this video is going to kind of wrap up those um, three videos, but also talk about um, memory slips and getting over that fear. So the first thing I'll say about memory slips is if you do even one of the suggestions that I gave in the previous videos, um, you will be much, much less likely to have a memory slip. So I just wanted to give you a nice list overview of, of these things. So um, the list is also available for download on my website, which is linked to below. Um, but here is the list for you. First, study your score and practice using your performance cues. That was in the first video. Use chunking to your advantage. Take uh, technique practice and music theory and oral skills seriously because it will help you memorize. That was also in the first video. Get enough sleep. That was the second video. Practice what you're trying to memorize last in the day and then first thing the next morning to get a memory bump. So that was in the second video. Practice from memory early in the learning process, as soon as early as the very first practice session. So that was in the third video. Use interleaved practice to test your memory, also in the third video. And make sure you strengthen all three types of memory equally that we have to use when we perform. So muscle memory, aural memory, declarative memory. That was also in the third video. Okay, so if you do any one of these things, it will drastically reduce the chances that you're gonna have a memory slip. I know it's overwhelming, it's like so much information. So just pick one and incorporate that one into your practicing. Then once that feels well incorporated, pick another one and just keep adding them one at a time until they all work their way into your practice habits. You don't have to do all of them at once. But I know that the fear of a memory slip is really strong and sort of overpowering. And I, the fear is there that, okay, what if I do all these things and I still have a memory slip anyways? So I wanted to talk about this because this falls under the category of what's known as choking. So choking, um, it's usually a word that's used more in sports than music, um, but choking is defined as not performing up to your potential despite having the ability to do it well and the preparation. So you can play your instrument well enough, you practiced really well, and yet you don't play up to your potential. So this has received a lot of inquiry in the sports world. How do you prevent sports people, <laughs> sports people, <laughs> I'm such a musician. How do you prevent athletes from choking? So there have been two dominant theories on this. The first theory is that, okay, maybe it's due to distraction. So when people are under pressure, there's the distraction of having people watch you. People are coughing and sneezing and babies are crying and whatever. And so you're distracted. You can't focus on the task at hand. And so you don't do well. You choke. So that's the distraction hypothesis. The other hypothesis is known as the explicit monitoring hypothesis. So this hypothesis says, okay, when you're being watched by other people, you start to sort of hyper-focus and micromanage every little aspect of your muscle memory. So I liken this to when you're you know, in school taking a test and the teacher comes and stands right next to your desk and stand, stares at you what you're doing. You start second guessing everything. You're like, oh my God, two plus two, is it four? Is it five? What is it? I don't know, right? But that feeling of somebody sitting there watching you, you start second guessing everything. And so that's basically what the explicit monitoring theory is, that you're sort of standing over yourself, watching every little thing you do and, and sort of, making sure you pay attention to every little single motion you do, every single little note you do. Okay, so it's one of these two, right? So they've devised um, experiments where well, they will put people in a high pressure situation and try to make them choke to, to test these theories. So to test the distraction hypothesis, they will put people in a high pressure situation. This is often done with golfers. I guess golfers choke more than other athletes or something. So they'll put a golfer in a high pressure situation and have them, you know, try to sink a putt or whatever, while also counting out loud backwards from 100 by sevens. So 100, 93, right back by sevens, out loud while they're trying to sink a putt. Um, that's hard. So you can imagine that if the distraction hypothesis is true, that doing this distracting task of counting backwards by sevens will cause them to choke more. 
right? But actually what you find is that when they have to do a distracting task, they choke less, which is really interesting in and of itself, but it also means that the, dis the distraction hypothesis can't be true because they were super distracted and they, they choked less. All right, so the explicit monitoring hypothesis, the way they test this, is they will put people in a high pressure situation, again, often with golfers, and they will say, okay, you have to sink this putt in front of all these people or whatever the high pressure situation is. And also we're going to videotape you and send the videotape to the top golf coach in the country to evaluate your putting technique. When they do this, people choke all over the place. So that indicates that it's the explicit monitoring hypothesis, that when we're under pressure, we have a tendency to micromanage every little detail of what we're doing, we get in our own way, then we can't do it, and we choke. All right, so how can you prevent this? Because obviously just knowing this information isn't enough, right? You can't tell yourself, okay, don't explicitly monitor, because what are you gonna do? You're gonna explicitly monitor, right? So they've also tested out ways to protect yourself against this. So the first thing that they've found that is really protective is videotaping yourself during practice. Because what this does is it gets you used to being watched, being monitored by somebody else, so you learn to deal with that sort of psychologically. So that's the first thing is videotape yourself in practice, practicing from memory, right? Um, and then the other thing they find is that when people think about big picture things, so in our case as musicians, thinking about phrasing and sound and expression and what do you want the audience to feel when you play this thing, that really protects against choking because you can't think about the micromanaging details when you're thinking about this big picture thing. But you have to th practice thinking big picture in the practice room. If you just think about phrasing and expression and how you want your audience to feel for the first time on stage, first of all, you're not going to trust that it's going to work. And second of all, you're not going to be able to do it because your brain has never practiced doing it. So you have to, pra you have to practice performing that way in your practice room, preferably in front of a video camera. So um, to add to our list that we had before, here's all the things we said before, add to that, practice video and taping yourself, playing from memory, and practice playing from memory, thinking about these big picture things. So that's the end of this part of the talk. That's the end of this presentation in general. I hope this has been helpful to you. Hope, hopefully it's been useful. Um, so go forth and play from memory with greater confidence. Thank you so much for watching and um, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments about anything.